Greetings! This is Christos with another video about electronics. Today I will test two USB UART modules. These are small modules that can be used for any kind of serial communication using USB ports. I usually buy these from Chinese dealers using eBay, but beware that there are some made of really bad quality and even with wrong pins marked. Stay away from these red PCB colored modules. These work, but they have wrong RX and TX markings and there is no direct DTR connection. The simplest way to test these USB modules is to connect them each other and then transmit and receive data from one module to the other one. We connect both modules to the computer and we wait until the drivers are installed. In most of the cases, Windows computers will recognize the module and install the drivers with no problems, but if it doesn't, you can always download and install the drivers by searching the module chip name on the internet. After the drivers are installed, we can now use software to connect, transmit and receive data using the modules. I use CoolTerm, a program tool that has a very nice and solid interface to connect, use and test serial communication ports. You can find the CoolTerm link below at the description. The idea is simple, we open two CoolTerm windows, one for each USB module. We use the options dialog to set the port, the speed and various connection settings, then we hit the connect button to connect to each module. Now whatever we transmit from one terminal window, it transmits to the other one and vice versa. The data is transmitted byte after byte and we can even use an oscilloscope trigger mode to inspect the transmitted data. I have the Rigel DS1054Z and it has a very handy decoder function that can be used to inspect the data in ASCII and binary form. To set the decoders we simply press the math button and we choose between its mode, depending on what values we need to inspect. I set one for binary and the other one for ASCII values. We connect the oscilloscope probe to the USB module ground and to the TX pin. Now and with the oscilloscope at trigger mode, whenever we transmit something from that module, the data will be captured and displayed on the oscilloscope monitor. It's a nice way to understand how serial communication devices transmit data. Finally, we are going to use Visual Studio to create a small c -sharp application that will be able to connect, transmit and receive data from a serial port. You can download Visual Studio Community for free at visualstudio.com. We create a new .NET 4.5 C-Sharp Windows Forms application. We first create the graphical user interface. We add a combo box for the port selection, a combo box for the speed selection, two buttons, one for connecting and one for disconnecting. A multi-line text box will be used for the main status display. We add a text box and a button for the transmitted data and finally we add a serial port component that will be used to connect to the selected serial ports. We are now ready to begin and write our code. We begin by adding all available serial ports to the port combo box. We use the serial port get port names function to enumerate and add to the port combo box all the ports. I have a list with the most common baud rate speeds and I add all of them to the speed combo box items collection. I use combo box selected index property to set the index value of the 9600 item selection so it will be always selected when the program starts. We write the connect button click event code. We first check if the port combo box has some text. If it doesn't, we display a message box about it and we exit the event function. We do the same thing for the speed combo box. Then we apply the port and speed settings to the serial port object and we call the open function. For a serious application, we always have to write error handlers and message the user for errors that may occur, but to keep this program simple, I won't implement any error handling. We check if the port has opened, and if it did, we disable the connect button and enable the disconnect button. 
We do that for better user experience and an easy way for the user to understand when they can connect and disconnect to a serial port. If it is connected, the user can't click on the connect button, but only on the disconnect button. If it is not connected, the user can't click on the disconnect button, but only on the connect button. We create a global function that will be used to write text to the status text box. It's always good practice to create functions for that kind of operations that will be called from many different locations of our code. We create a static string variable for the status text and a function to write that status text to the status text box. We do that because the serial port component runs on a different thread than our form and it can't use the form controls directly, so we will use that function inside the serial port data received event using invoke and an inline event handler object. We are now ready to run and test if our serial program is working. We connect to the USB module connected at COM5. We use cool term to connect to the other module connected to COM9 and we type some keys to the cool term window to check if our program receives data. Then we type some text to the send text box and we hit the send button to check if the cool term window receives the data. And we are done. We have a basic fully functional program that connects, receives and transmits data using available serial ports. I have uploaded the C-Sharp program project on GitHub and you will find the links below in the description. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you like this video.